Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. IP addresses are written down in a decimal format, but to understand how they control the logical separation between networks, it really helps if you think about them the same way that a computer does, and that is in binary. So in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to convert decimal numbers into binary, and that's going to help understand IP addressing as we work through the rest of this section. As humans, we're conditioned to count in decimal. It's how we're taught to do it from a really young age, and we do it now without thinking about it. When we write a number down, for each column in the number, we have got 10 possible choices from 0 through to 9. And every time we add a column to the left, the value is multiplied by 10. And we start with 1s as the furthest right column. So let me show you what I mean. So when we write down a number, starting from the right-hand side of a number, we've got the 1s there. The next column is the 10s. Then we've got the 100s then the thousands, then the ten thousands, and so on. So you can see that it's being multiplied by 10 each time we add a column to the left. If we were going to write down the number 236, the way that we do that is starting from the left now. So starting with the 1000s column, how many 1000s can we fit into 236? Well, obviously that's going to be a zero because 236 is a smaller number than 1000. So we can't fit any 1000s into 236. That leaves us still with 236 left over. Next up, how many 100s can we fit into 236? Well, we can fit two 100s into 236, and that leaves us with 36 left over. Next up, how many 10s can we fit into the 36 that was left over? We can fit three 10s into 36. That leaves us with six left over. And then how many 1s can we fit into six? That's obviously six. So that gives us the number of 236 is how we would write that down. Now, like I said at the start of this lecture, that's completely obvious and intuitive to you. So you're maybe wondering why I'm breaking it down like that. Well, it's because binary is not obvious and intuitive, but it works the same way. So seeing how it works with decimal is then going to help understand and see how it works with binary. So computers don't work in decimal, they work in binary. And electrical impulses are either off or on. So there's only two choices, a zero or a one unlike the 10 choices that we have in decimal, which is 0 through to 9. And every time we write down a number in binary, for each column in the number, we've got two possible choices. That's a 0 or a 1, rather than the 0 through to 9 that we had in decimal. And every time we add a column to the left, the value is multiplied by 2, rather than multiplied by 10, as it is in decimal. So looking at the columns in binary now, again, we've got a 1 on the furthest right, the same as it was in decimal. Then we multiply that by 2. So the next is 2. Then we've got 4. Then we've got 8. So we just keep multiplying by 2, just doubling it each time. Next would be 16. Then 32. Then 64. Then 128. Then 256. Then 512. And so on. So you saw how to write down 236 in decimal before. Now let's see how to write 236 in binary. And you can see on the slide here that the number we're going to get in the end is 11101100. So really not intuitive like it is with decimal. But we do it the same way. So rather than seeing how many we can fit in, it's either going to be on or off, 1 or 0. So starting off with 256 here, does 256 fit into 236? Yes or no? 
Well, no, it doesn't. 236 is a smaller number than 256. So we can fit zero 256s into 236, and that leaves us with still 236 left over. Next up, can we fit 128 into 236 or not? And the answer is yes, so that gives us a 1, and we've got 108 left over, because 200, 236 minus 128 is 108. So next up, does 64 fit into that 108 that was left over or not? Yes, it does. So we put down a 1 and we've got 44 left over because 108 minus 64 is 44. Next up, does 32 fit into the 44 that was left over? Yes, it does. So we have a 1 again and we've got 12 left over now. Next up, does 16 fit into 12 or not? No, it doesn't. So we put a 0 down and we've still got 12 left over. Then does eight fit into 12 or not? Yes, it does, so that's a one, and we've got four left over. Then does four fit into four? Yes, it does, so we put a one down, and that leaves us with zero left over. So obviously the other two digits are gonna be a zero and a zero, because two and one do not fit into zero. So you can see there that when we've got it written out, that comes out to 11101100. That's 236 in binary. As a final check, you should always have zero left over. So if you get down to the one column and you've still got digits left over there, that means that you've made a mistake. So you should go back and do it again. You can also do a final check of your answer as well where you do add up all of the columns where you've got a one, add them all together, and that should total up the number you were looking for. So in our example here, we've got a one in the 128, a one in the 64, a one in the 32, in the eight, and in the four. So if we add up 128 and 64 and 32, add eight, add four, that equals 236, which was the number that we were looking to calculate. Okay, next up, let's check that you understood that and you can do it. So what is 179 in binary? I'll pause the video here, write down what is 179 in binary, and I'll be back in a second to check that you got it right. Okay, so how did you get on? The easiest way to do it is to get a pen and piece of paper and write the columns down exactly like you see on the slide here and then just go from left to right as you saw me doing it in the last example. So figuring out 179 in binary, does 256 fit into 179? Yes or no? No, it does not. So we put down a zero and we've still got 179 left. Then does 128 fit into 179 or not? Yes, it does. So we put down a one and we've got 51 left. Then does 64 fit into 51? No, it does not. So we put down a zero and we've still got 51 left over. Then does 32 fit into 51 or not? Yes, it does. And 51 minus 32 is 19. So we've got 19 left over. Then does 16 fit into 19 or not? Yes, it does. We put down the one and we've got three left over. Does eight fit into three? No, it doesn't. So we put down zero and we've still got the three left over. Does four fit into three? No, it doesn't. So again, we put down zero and we've still got three left over. Then does two fit into three? Yes, it does. So we put down a one and we've got one left over. And finally, one does go into one. So we put a one there and then we've got our zero left over. So writing down 179 in binary is 10110011. Okay, so that's it. That's how you convert from decimal to binary. And that's going to help as we go through the rest of the section. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.